In this tutorial, I'll be talking about the matrix command, which you can use to affect the texture coordinates for a texture property in your shader with a matrix. So I won't be going over how to actually make this matrix. The script is in this project file, the Unity package, which I'm linking to in the description. Uh, so you can read more about that if you want. It's just a rotation matrix. And I'm also not going to be going over exactly what I did with the UVs. You can open up this Blender file if you're really interested in seeing that. It's not too complicated. Um, but what's most important in this tutorial is what is actually, actually going on with the matrix command, not in particular what I'm doing. So what we're going to do is use in, a, in the first, uh, the only pass, we're going to have the first texture stage. The other one's commented out right now. And we're going to take a texture and apply, and this is UV mapped, okay? Uh, binding text coord to text coord zero. The reason we need bind channels is because we will be using multiple UV maps. And we're going to apply a matrix, using the word matrix, to those texture coordinates. And you'll see this rotate matrix, which is not found in the properties or anywhere else. You can't actually define a matrix in the inspector uh, for a material. You couldn't do it here. So what, we're, what we have to do then is use material.set matrix. And so here's an example there, which is also using a rotation matrix. So in my script that I have applied to this plane, I just, uh, every, every frame I'm updating a matrix, and then I'm using material.set matrix, and then whatever property I have here first has to be what we're, has to be the name of something we're using in the shader itself, otherwise you won't get any change. It'll just be useless. And we're going to apply something, this ro rotate matrix variable, matrix 4 by 4 um, as, that as that matrix. So we're taking this matrix from the script and then sending it to the GPU, and then it's using that on all of the texture coordinates for this texture. So let's see what that looks like. We're playing in a moment. Okay, so now we have a rotation matrix. And it's just, it, it's not um, doing any animation inside of the script, really. It's not, it's not updating the texture coordinates here. It's only creating a matrix and sending that to the GPU. So if you need, what this, well, what this is good for is applying the same transformation to every, uh, every UV coordinate. It doesn't work for moving some UVs this way and some UVs that way. No, they all have to be the same here. But if that is the case, then it should be faster to use a matrix in the shader as opposed to doing that in a script and updating the UVs and then sending all the UVs over to the GPU again. So we'll also see how we can combine that um, in other texture stages. So we'll add a second texture stage. And this is with a different texture. And we'll just be adding the two together. We're waiting for it to play here. OK, so that's just fine. We saw what we had already seen, added to something else, and seems to work just fine without having to define any other matrices or anything. I mentioned before that the matrix command works on a property. So let's find out what that means exactly in practice. What we have now is a shader that is taking the texture 2 and UV mapping that onto the plane and there's no contribution of the first texture stage. So although the texture stage is happening, it's being completely overwritten. So we don't see any contribution of the first property, main texture. Now what we'll do is change it, so the, the, change it so that the first texture stage is going to be using texture 2, that property. So now we'll have a matrix applied to that which by itself will look like this. And then we'll apply the texture stage. Um, we'll, we'll use a second texture, second texture stage with the second property, and it ought to look like that. And there should be no contribution of the rotating, um, rotating texture. So now we're going to play. And instead, we get the matrix from the first pass applied in the second texture stage, even though it's using a different UV mapping. And that's because we're using the same property. Let's add a third texture stage. And of course, you couldn't do this if you were using the graphics emulation for the MBX light. So we'll put this, we'll actually, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll put that in the third texture stage. 
we'll have to have a binding for the texture coordinates. So we'll say bind text chord one to text chord two as well. So now we have something in the middle. And so maybe this matrix wouldn't carry over to the third texture stage because there's something in between. So let's once again test to see that we don't see the matrix when it's playing. Different, you know, they're reversed this time, the properties, so that we have um, the red, green, blue, and white mesh in the second texture stage. But then the third texture stage is going to be using the other texture again. And it doesn't matter that it's the third texture stage. It doesn't matter if it's the fourth or uh, so on and so on. It's the same property, so it's still having the same matrix. So there's a couple ways to, if you need to use the same texture with a matrix in one texture stage but not in another, um, have that happen. So the first one is to apply a new matrix. So we'll have the rotate matrix, the first texture stage, and then we'll use a second texture stage with a different matrix. And you can't, again, set up a matrix in the um, properties, in the, in the inspector. So in start, I'll just set another matrix called identity matrix with matrix 4x4.identity, which is the identity matrix. So we'll set that up, and we'll put it in here. So now, in the second texture stage, we'll be multiplying the UV coordinates by the identity matrix. So although a multiplication is happening, we don't see any rotation because the, the UVs are just being multiplied by what, what they are. I mean, being multiplied by the identity matrix resulting in what they are. There's no rotation. And there's one more way that I know of to stop this from happening. We'll go ahead and we will get rid of that matrix there. We won't have to use a matrix in the second texture stage. And we'll use main text there. And so that's not what we want to have rotating. We don't want to see what we had in the first part of this video with this uh, red, green, blue, and white rotating on top of this mesh. But instead, we'll have this mesh rotating in the first texture stage if we use that same texture for that property. So we're using the same texture in both properties now. And now, we don't have any rotation. So again, it's the matrix is operating on the property, not the texture, not the UV map, not the stage, anything. It's just the property itself. And if we go ahead and comment out the second texture stage and look at this again, then we'll see that it is indeed rotating with the matrix in the first texture stage and just being completely overwritten not taking any matrix into account here. So although I've been completely overwriting the first texture stage with the second texture stage um, in general that's pretty useless so what we'll do now is have the same texture being used for both properties being uh, rotated by a matrix in the first stage and then we'll combine it with the stationary second UV map in the second texture stage and we can get an effect like this, and it does not use any more VRAM than just using the texture in one property.